So this is the Audi Q4 e-tron. This is the graduation of what Volkswagen is doing when it comes to these kind of electric platform cars. So Volkswagen themselves said that they want to be able to make a platform underneath and for you to be able to change the exterior and the interior to suit what you wanted to do. And this is the graduation of that. So the sister or brother cars of this would be Skoda Enyaq and Volkswagen's ID4. And of course, ID3 would have similar bits underneath as well. So this kind of, this platform that's extending out across the range is actually quite interesting. Future cars, say it born, will be on the way as well, also using the same platform. So what we've got is swappable parts. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I know you might think that this is a problem, but in actual fact, the tuning and the suspension system and all that stuff, that all comes down to Audi themselves. The Q4 range has three drive versions, including the top of the line Quattro model, with a maximum output of 220 kilowatts, or that's 299 PS. The rear wheel drive Q4 40 e-tron achieves a range of up to 520 kilometers, that's 323.1 miles in the WLTP cycle. Q4 e-tron retrieves a drag coefficient of 0.28, and that's quite slippery, but the Sportback gets an even lower figure with a drag coefficient of 0.26, very important for long-range driving. Depending on the way you recline the back seats, the volume of the luggage compartment is 520 to 1490 litres in the Q4 e-tron, and 535 to 1460 litres under the power trunk lid of the Sportback. Both models can tow trailers with a weight of up to a thousand kilograms, that's braked. With the Quattro versions, you can even pull up to 1200 kilograms. Even sitting into the, into the e-tron feels like something from the future. I have to say, it really does feel like, look the way it lights up, that's beautiful. You know you're in an Audi but it doesn't feel like any Audi you've driven before. I love the steering wheel. That square top and bottom, I know it's been done before. If you look at some of the Peugeots out there, Peugeots out there, you'll find that they've got those square things as well, but that's actually just a nice way of doing it. So this is a proper SUV from Audi, which is exactly what we wanted. Marries into the QA, so you've got the, we even go back a little bit further to the A3 e-tron, which was a hybrid version of the car as well. We've had various versions of this or various toys with this over the years, but this one is the culmination of a lot of experience. And just to make sure I knew what I was talking about, I talked to the marketing manager for Audi Ireland, Mr. Richard Belloy. So Richie, where does this fit into the family range of things that we're trying to do with, with Audi right now? Yeah, it's going to be exciting times for us. So if, if you think at the moment, what, what have we got? We've got, you know, our, our clean petrol diesel there available for customers. You've got plug-in cars. So we've, got, we've got up to uh, seven plug-in models of, available across the range as well for those who need, who need plug-in as a solution for their mobility. And then we've got full EV. And as I said earlier on, we've got uh, e-tron, our, our large SUV, e-tron GT, and then this, the, the Q4 e-tron. So there's, there's a choice across all technology for, for, for our customer needs. And it's a really exciting time. So, so we're working very hard in Audi to develop more and more EV models. And by 2025, we will have up to 20 EV models hitting the markets. And that's right across all segments and all body styles. So we're focusing at the moment on SUVs, but you're gonna have maybe more of the, the saloons or our, our fastbacks coming as well in, 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 in full electric mode. So, as I said, really exciting times coming up over the next uh, three years. And just the price of this one, I know there's, there's different battery levels you can have on it, but the popular priced one, the one you think is gonna sell the most? Yeah, I mean, the, the starting price of this is, is uh, 41,300. That's on the road, including delivery, including service plan, and, and after the, the grants are, are applied. Um, we, we believe it'll be around the 50,000 mark for, for is the car that we will sell with, with, depending on what battery you choose and then depending on what line we'll, you'll, you'll choose. So we've got three equipment lines. We've got Advanced, Sport and S-Line. Um, we believe most people will, will take the Sport and around the 50,000 mark I think will be the, the sweet spot for, for what customers are going to order. And another question just maybe you might not be aware of. In the future, obviously this October, things are going to change again as the budgets get messed with every single time. Grants might be messed with in the budget again. Whether they go up or down, I don't think it's very clear at the moment. Do you think there's a point of getting rid of grants or should we increase the grants or is there a way we can encourage more people to look at electric cars from a price perspective? Well, I, you know, I think in markets across Europe which have seen um, large EV adoption, um, grants are, are part of that, that buying process. Um, so really the question is, you know, there's, there's some, some, some 
pretty large goals coming up for 2030, like 936,000 electric vehicles uh, on, on, on the road. But if we need to accelerate the, the, the transition into, into EV, there needs to be some sort of grant inf infrastructure there. Mm. Um, and we're, we're waiting to see what the government plans are for, for, for next year and beyond. Even the AA are looking for reassurances over the future of electric vehicles in Ireland. You know, we need a plan and there doesn't seem to be a plan at the moment. Uh, so this is the Audi Q4 e-tron. Uh, we're going to have different size batteries of these cars, of course, but the one that people will want to probably buy, being an Audi, will be the probably mid-range or long-range version of the 500 kilometer plus range one. This has 408 kilometers left in it. Uh, there is some warning lights on the dashboard, which is kind of nerve-wracking. I'm sort of used to that because realistically a lot of the cars we test, particularly these ones just been brought in for a spin, are first production or pre-production nearly, you know, they're just a stage of that. They're not final production models, the ones that are actually be delivered to your house. Uh, they will come later on. So we look at the rest of it now at the moment. I love that steering wheel. I'm not sure why I like the steering wheel so much, other than it's just kind of squared off on the top and the bottom, but I actually like that. Uh, it seems like a nice steering wheel to hold and use and you have a good idea of where things are on it. Being an electric car of course I'm moving into traffic here out in Sandyford and well I don't care because I'm an automatic number one and I don't have to do a whole lot about that. Drive select is there right so drive select we go for efficiency let's do that. Press the button for efficiency oh takes the fun out of the car real fast oh but it stops the resistance so the rolling resistance changed uh, let's have a look and put on more or less. This is efficiency, so I'm getting a green light there. Say I'm being efficient. That's good. Now efficiency in most cars, petrol and diesel included, actually turns off the air conditioning. That's how they save fuel. Uh, so it's an interesting way of looking at saving fuel, but that's, that's essentially it. Save petrol by getting rid of stuff and save electricity by getting rid of stuff. So that's what they're essentially doing there. So drive select and then go into comfort, which will turn all the air conditioning back on. I can feel that temperature difference change straight away. Um, interestingly, this one doesn't have the virtual dashboard on it or virtual heads up display on it. Uh, they couldn't get one. They said it's available though, which we've seen, which tells you information about the road and your surroundings, what's going on around you and all that. So that would be pretty good. Um, but this one, there's some nice noises outside. It's very interesting to see how this is going to work. Right. Interior fitment. We don't have long with the car, if I'm honest, but interior fitment is pretty good. It feels like an Audi. It feels nice. It feels everything. It just feels so substantial. That top dashboard, look at that sprongy bit up there. That's good. You have this kind of carbon fiber effect on the top of that as well. It is very nice. I have to say, sitting in here is very nice. We'll test out a bit of acceleration as we as we bomb it up the M50 a little bit, and we'll try out the acceleration on it. We get a green light run. Here we go. Green lights. Dum da da dum da 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 dum dum. That's the chain. Dum wow. Dum da 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 da. Well, that's very good actually. Not like snap your neck powerful, but it's powerful enough. You can add and subtract uh, rolling resistance, so I'm turning it off. Flappy paddle here adds it, so plus takes it away, so I have no resistance now at all. Take my foot off and it just coasts on there at 80, no hassle. If I click that on once, I get a little bit. Twice, I get a lot more. <laughs> it's a lot more. Um, and you do get a feeling that they're being resisted as you're driving along. Uh, I'm still in dynamic mode, but I'm, I'm able to control that that uh, system there going on and off. That's actually quite interesting because Audi e-tron GT didn't have that, uh, or at least I didn't see it in the one I was driving. Um, so now, oh yeah, you really do feel, you could drive one pedal in this for sure. I'm going to stick on all three there. Uh, we're going to see that as I come up to this junction ahead. When I lift off, I oh, I actually am activating brakes there. I can feel... I can feel full resistance has come on now. I'm using the friction brake as well to slow me down, which is extra charge in it. That's actually quite interesting to feel that. 
the turning is nice the tram is nice and straight on it i feel that like it's on tracks no body roll to speak of massively bit of body roll but they all have that turn off the resistance now as we're heading up onto the m50 here acceleration would be a tinchy bit lackluster i'm gonna say just a little bit just i wanted a little bit more torque there out of that run up because uh that's what I expect with electric cars. You expect that kind of punch that goes with it. Now, I know a lot of these are meant for efficiency, which means you're kind of, instead of looking at it like what is it against other electric cars, you kind of have to look at it as to what is it against other cars. Now, we're just gonna merge into lanes here behind a duster. Duster. There we go. That is, it's very efficient overtaking though, I have to say, that's, that's pretty good. Um, I do have, no, I don't have active cruise control. This is how quiet it is in here. That's pretty good. Tiny bit of wind noise around that wing mirror on that side. A little bit on this side. You might notice a little yellow light going on and off there. That's the blind spot indicator, which kind of glows, kind of comes on and glow and then goes out again. As cars get further away. Instead of a rev counter, you've got a percentage gauge, which tells you how much of a percent of battery or how much of a percent of energy you're using as you're on the road. So 100% of performance can be used. Audi are doing some really interesting things within the electric range. And Volkswagen Group as a whole are at a, a bit of an electric range stuff as well, which makes it a very interesting um, fight right now because what's really happening is they're fighting against Tesla, and they, because Tesla were dominating the market, but Tesla's sales now are falling rapidly. The reason behind the fall in sales is quite simple, competition. That's all that's really happened, is that someone who maybe doesn't like a Tesla wants to buy something else, and Volkswagen are providing that right now. Also in the mix here is the Mercedes range, VQs, and then you've got, um, you've got all the other brands that are jumping into the back of that. Still waiting for BMW to really launch something into the electric range that will compete with this, but it is on the way. They say they're gonna make loads of them. So the, 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 the point of Mercedes, Audi, BMW being the, the three kind of halo brands, I suppose, um, is still relevant today. This is serene. <laughs> That's a good word for it. Serene in driving, just chill out and let it do its thing. No active cruise control, um, which is a bit weird. I suppose looking at the spec sheet, it's the price that's killing them, you know? You have to be under 50 grand or you're not gonna get the granty things. So this is the problem. We don't have a proper future to this so we're missing out on some of the options though. Anyway, thank you very much for coming along. I've enjoyed my time with you. I hope you've watched this part of the video. Uh, it's interesting to see where everybody's going with electric cars. Um, we'll see over the next five to 10 years um, exactly what moves government par parties will make, like the, the Green Party, uh, which I'm in dismay at. I don't understand why they haven't come up with a plan. It's don't. Anyway, it's beyond my pay grade, but I still will be asking questions of the Green Party to get these things done. Thank you very much for joining in on this review. I hope you can hit the subscribe button, uh, which is a free way of supporting the channel. If you actually want to put in some money or sponsorship details or whatever you want to do, get in touch with me, bobflav at thenextgear.com. My, my email address is in the business inquiries. You can also support the channel through Patreon, PayPal, uh, whatever way you want, really. Or go to bobflavin.com and buy a hoodie or a t-shirt or a sticker or something, whatever's there for sale. My wife runs the shop. I don't really run the shop. She's my business manager. She runs the shop. If you've got a complaint, put it in the complaint box, which starts with 1-800, I have a complaint. And then ends with beep, beep, beep. <laughs> I'm only messing. Uh, we're trying to keep up with everybody on the shop. It's it's quite hard work. It's new for us. We've new. We never owned a shop before. Now we own a shop. Uh, so we're trying to keep up with everything. And Brexit has absolutely murdered deliveries of things in and out of the country. So it's very difficult operating times right now. Uh, but we're working on it. Thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing and li liking and sharing and all that sort of stuff. Uh, until the next time. I will see you on the far side.
There's a Model S here beside me as well. All electric cars. See all the electric cars coming out. Oh, Lord. Yeah, comfort mode. You can do the resistance thing in comfort mode when you're decelerating. But as soon as you accelerate, it's gone again. It disappears. That's weird. Why would it do that? 